Maxime was tipped to be a world champion and a great of the sport from his early EMX 125 days. I use, I, I've been in a re rehab center, you know. I was in a center with uh, people that were really, really in a bad situation. And seeing how they were just enjoying the life and smiling and always have the joke in them, saying a joke or something, you know, I was like, I cannot complain. Yeah, I was rookie in the class. Uh, you know, you, you are coming, you don't expect anything. Roman Fabra is about to make history here. The rookie winning in the MXGP class. He wins the race and he will now realize it. Uh, I look at you then. First of all, then, it's been a great season for you. Obviously, you've hit a very high level again for the first time in quite a while. How does it feel to reach those heights again and just be back to the best version of you? Because it has been a long time. Roma Fevre, big day for him. Eight points separate him and the championship leader, Tim Geiser. Is it going to be... Goes around the outside, haven't seen that, but uh, not able to make the move stick at the bottom of the hill. Right, is there a pass being lined up here from Fevre? He gets down the inside, and he has made the move. The fans on their feet, they are absolutely going bananas. Fevre, your new leader. We saw it coming. We saw the move work the first time around with Jeremy Siwa. And Herlix tried to run out the inside. He's running out of time. Fevre is going to hold on. And Roman Fevre out of the final two corners here. The number three takes victory in race one. An epic win for Roman Fevre. Uh, I tried to close the gap, but many up I was not that close to make it happen. So I didn't show the line. And then when I was close to him, I did. And yeah, make a lead, but uh, whew, with the lap rider, it came really tough at the end. Uh, but yeah. Overall, I'm happy, one more to go, and uh, we will celebrate with the French fans. Good luck for the second race. Yeah, I make some mistakes this year, some uh, mistake uh, when I was leading, and uh, with, uh, you know, let's say, uh, I didn't have any rider uh, who put pressure on me on that moment, and then I crash, or... And he leads the way by 2.7 seconds now over Jorge Prado, Hurlings. Ah, oh, Roman Fevre throws away the lead. For the second week in succession in the second race, Roman Fevre wants Renji Kawasaki out of the lead and handing the advantage to Jorge Prado. And I make the mistake, so that it's really difficult to, un yeah, to understand. It's always possible to make a mistake, but those ones are really difficult. Uh, sometimes, uh, I crashed some race that I was I wanted to do too quick, like the first few laps too quick, and I wasn't maybe on a good position, so I wanted to pass the rider really too fast, and then I make a mistake. So that that I can understand, and we can analyze that. But like when uh, when I was leading uh, many times, I, yeah, many times, few times I was leading the race, and then I crashed by my own. So uh, that's the worst. Uh, scenario to uh, to accept and also to um, to analyze because uh, you don't know sometimes I cannot uh, explain why exactly I did. Fevre has the biggest gap that he's had for a few laps over Jeffrey Herlix for all of these guys it's now or never Fevre can't do any more than he's doing how close our oh, guys sir almost alongside can't affect the move there though Fevre throws away the lead on the final lap. And then there were three. Jeffrey Hurlings wins race one here. Looks back and sees Kai Rowley there. Geiser third. Fevre disappointment for him in fourth place. Uh, maybe I'm not so fey, but I'm pretty surprised, honestly. I mean, I always consider this uh, 2015 title as uh, a unique opportunity for him to get the title. Uh, because at that moment, so many riders were injured. Roman Fevre is about to make history here. A rookie winning in the MXGP class. He wins the race and he will now realise it. Still, he won the title. So as I said previously, it's in the book. 
as that. You want it, you deserve it, of course. But this year, something has changed. And if you see where he is now in the championship, being the rider who have made most of the mistakes on track, it's amazing because it means that, yeah, he's there and he can fight. I'm still not betting on him for the final victory, but eventually, if he will uh, uh, score the final victory, he will deserve it to me a little bit more than in 2015 because he was there all time with all the top riders fighting with him. And I was pretty surprised also about his only success this year. Winning Lommel is not easy. Round six is about to draw to a concluding end. Who will it be though that wins the Grand Prix here? Jeffrey Herling's nearest off camera at the back. The gate about to drop, it does. Not a good jump for the 84. Prado and Fevre, and again, Monticelli around the outside. Jacoby going with him this time. Kawasaki lead the way once again, and then Monticelli throws it away. 47, Fevre, Jonas, 40, Geiser, 34. We've got Wade Jellos here, and Fevre has thrown it away. Fevre has thrown away a five second advantage over Paul's Jonas. Another Fevre, who was the fastest man around the track, a lap ago with a 2.09. Obviously a 2.13, so it cost him four or five seconds that time around. Oh, we've got to change for second. Fevre has barged his way past Jorge Prado, who's looking back to retaliate. Side by side, but Fevre is just going to steal it. He's alongside and takes the lead away from, uh, from Paul Jonas. Roman Fevre finally wins at Lommel, the toughest place on earth. He can't believe it. Yeah, I'm, I'm stuck right now. I feel all the work pay off, finally. Still make a mistake, but uh, that second moto, I was on it. So proud of, of my team, Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team. And uh, we're going to celebrate tonight. Roman Fevre is maybe at the top of the list of most entertaining riders. But when he is on, he's so exciting to watch because he's so fast, he's got so much raw speed and definitely isn't afraid to hang it out and leave it all on the track. That saying there effectively sums up his 2021 season so far. He's been the fastest rider in the MXGP class on more than one occasion. At most rounds, you could say. He's led the third most laps at this point, that being the halfway mark. But he's also had some crashes, he's also had some mistakes and that's cost him because really, if you look at the positions he's been putting himself in, the speed that he's had, and effectively what he's delivered as a whole thus far this year, he should be leading the World Championship. And at the halfway mark now, with eight rounds to go, he's only four points down, so we're not far from that. Uh, we, we play already some good cards this season, but I still make some mistakes, and uh, which, uh, which I will try my best to end up the season really good without making mistakes. And um, I, feel, I feel clearly that this season can be mine, so uh, I will do everything I can to, to finalize that. The Motocross of Nations is a special event. Um, motocross is an individual sport, much like every other type of racing. Team events don't really factor in except for one time of the year when the Motocross of Nations or the Olympics of Motocross fires up, typically at the end of September, and pits country against country in a unique format that mixes 450s and 250s, Americans against Europeans. You just see a lot of, you see a different dynamic to what you do for the rest of the other 11 months of the year. That's what makes the Motocross of Nations so special and that's what makes it the biggest event in the sport. There's a reason why every fan no matter their continent, no matter where they're based, no matter their background. There's a reason why every fan tunes into this event. Um, yeah, I mean, when I was young, it was a dream for me to, to race the Motocross of Nations, because all here in Europe, uh, all the big guys showed up, also from the States and from any, you know, other country. And I remember, I remember that day like it was yesterday in Sejo in 2011 when I did my first Nations. I was 17 years old. I was like, oh, did they really ask me to go to the Nations? Like it was super cool and, and a great experience because I was watching guys like, you know, Danchi, Villopoto, uh, 
in TV and in magazines and they were just heroes and all out of a sudden I stood on the start gate and like I saw them next to me you know and it was like wow you know I'm racing them now. They all want a piece so um, but it, it's not bad it's, it's definitely gonna be good. My favorite motocross of nations, uh, the best memories are from the first one because it was impressive for me and I was just, uh, yeah, it, it was incredible. I will never forget that. And beside that, uh, I loved Asen and just because I was like doing really well and I was up front and, and winning the quality race. In we managed to get the, the win home, you know, which is amazing, especially like I said on this track and now Pressure is all for Team Switzerland to qualify, I think, I hope so. And now uh, we look for tomorrow and I'm, I'm stoked with that. It's the moustache, it's the moustache. We're going to start with the ballot and we have on their left hand side, the country's right hand side, the number, so the gate picks, okay? Yeah, it's special. I mean, just, just when you, you know, go through your social media and things like that after, even before the race, you know, this is one race where you tend to find everyone watches. It's uh, the GPs, you know, there's 20 in one season and if uh, someone has a plan to, to go out with some mates or something, they kind of forget about it. Whereas in Nations, I feel like, you know, even if something's going on, everyone still manages to, to kind of sit down at one point and catch up and watch this race. So it's, it's one of them where, especially if you come away with a good result, you have uh, yeah, crazy, crazy big response from it. As a, as a team member, you know, I'm always proud to represent my country and um, obviously the last few years, you know, we, we are a really strong country, we know that and... Um always have been something really amazing. Every year I was like surprised because everyone was saying, oh, this is the best nations, oh, this is the hugest, this is the biggest, this is... But year per year we, we have seen really uh, some really nice event in uh, Martelli Basin, in Majora, uh, in, in Lommel, uh, in Teutschenthal. Uh, uh, I have plenty of uh, nice memories about uh, uh, Motocross of Nations. Uh, there was a moment uh, where I was considering a little bit less uh, the, the, um, the, the event compared to the World Championship, but then uh, when you get older, uh, I think it's something that is like you, you feel more uh, the, uh, the fact that you are part of a country. So you are not cheering anymore for your favorite rider or for your favorite team, favorite brand, but you are cheering for your nation. And, and that's something that is completely different uh, from what we are used to, to have. Britain! Great Britain goes on position 16. This year, yeah, I was the, the favourite in the team and, you know, let's say the meant to be the stronger member of the three. So it was, I mean, nice to, to have that feeling was amazing. To be selected as that, that guy was like a privilege for me. But um, yeah, it comes with a little bit of extra pressure. And uh, Saturday, day one of the MX Nations 2021. Um, heading out now for warm up, first session on track. Not really any pressure today, I mean, the, the pegs for qualifying position were pulled yesterday. Um, Team GB was 16, so not amazing, but not too bad. It can be a lot worse. It's a sacrilege, but a new helmet has to be dropped. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 74th edition of the FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations. My name's Paul Mailing. I'll be joined by Jason Thomas from Fly Racing for the qualifying races today and the main events tomorrow. Fly Racing 15 second ward goes up, we are getting ready to go racing this qualifying race here, 20 minutes plus 2 laps, keeping an eye on our guys, but we can see good jump from Ben Watson, and there is Watson who runs wide through the first turn, uses all of that racetrack, takes Ben Watson to the outside, getting their way through the first few corners, and it's Watson who leads on the Yamaha for Great Britain, absolutely flying start for the Brit, a 29-4 in uh, Cairoli's favour, 29-8, 29-4 in Kai Rowley's favour, 25-7 in the fastest sector of the race for Kai Rowley, 24-7.
So that gap is coming down all of a sudden. Final turn, this is where the pass is going to happen, maybe. End of the straight, Watson knows he's there, can't do anything about it. Tony Cairoli goes through with two laps to go. Uh, you see just absolutely no fight from Ben there, which I still believe there's some sort of arm pump or, or some sort of nervousness happening because you see him, he's already losing, losing the toe here a little bit, and uh, I think he's perfectly happy to bring this home in second place. And uh, Tony Cairoli, a week ago, we didn't even know if he was going to be here. Well, he is, he's arrived, he's won the qualifying race. I'm, uh, I'm quite painful around the track, but I could ride very smooth uh, and, uh, and good lines. And uh, yeah, we take the lead, so it's good for Italy because uh, the gate peak is very important tomorrow. Okay, best luck for tomorrow. Thanks, Tony. If you're joining us for the first time, it's not such a very warm welcome to Italy. In fact, a uh, very wet one now. We've had rain for the last hour and a half or so. It's gradually picking up as well, but the track is still in very good condition. Modifications to the racetrack as, uh, since the last time we came here for a Grand Prix. <laughs> So yeah, Sunday, I mean, we came together as a team and, and the strategy with the start was not really simple, but you know, you just listen to Mark in that way and, and kind of go with it as a team and make sure everyone's happy. And, and Sean, you know, with his injury with the film, he decided that he would just go on the outside, both motors and, and give the opportunity to me and Comrade to kind of achieve the best we could and, and have that opportunity to, to get a good start and, you know, have that clear track, let's say. So, uh, of course, a little nerves, but the most of the time, it's uh, yeah, it's excitement, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward. The five-second borders turn. We are getting ready to go. MX on 74. The burst into life here in Mantua. It's going to be a very interesting first turn. And Kyroli around the outside, and uh, he and Kovalov both go down. Just what, just what I was fearful of, that first turn, the outsides have not worked throughout the weekend and they're already paying the price for it. So Cairoli, Team Italy, favourites Glenn Coltenoff, the defending champions, already drama here, going into the first corner in Mantua. Just looking uh, down the leaderboard, Glenn Coltenoff, who fell at turn one as we look at the top three riders. Coltenoff is now 20th, 10 laps complete. TKO has 1.4 seconds. And there's thunder rumbling all around this Mantua racetrack. We've seen a few flashes of light as well. There is Watson right behind them now in third for Team GB. The run down towards the finish line. The Rockstar Energy has found a rider. And Team Denmark round out the final turn. And Thomas Kier Olsen wins race one here at the Monster Energy Motocross of Nations in Mantua. It was raining heavy, goggles were crucial, and it was a little, not in Jero mode, but you know, you needed to, to stay focused to make no mistakes, and for me that was, was nice. Just kind of kept plugging away with each lap, and yeah, third for the first race was solid for Team GB. And I, I followed, of course. I mean, I'm a racer, and I've, you know, uh, I have it in my blood. So um, it was, you know, I, nice to see, like, especially Ben, you know, he's a great guy. He's uh, doing good for a rookie, you know, you need to give him some time, that's just normal because the MXGP class is incredible tough at the moment. I think it's getting harder every year. I, I don't know really they ever stop to, you know, settle. And we are back live then with the race as it's about to go. We've got a green flag being raised imminently over on the back side of the grid. All the big hitters down the inside there. That's where we're going to keep our eye. There's a couple in the middle as well with Juan Bank and the number one of Glenn Coldenoff who looks like to get a good jump as well. But Herbert closes the door on Kai Roby. Coldenoff with a good jump coming out of the first turn. Cole Olsen, I think he's down. He is. Good start for Ben Watson as well for Team Great Britain. Here he is, third on his monster energy Yamaha, the number seven. Yeah, everything was going good and then I had one one big mistake and took quite a big crash though. And uh, oh, Ben Watson! Off the side of the bike, just grabbed his foot pegs. I was about to say they're tied on points in the Netherlands and Great Britain. But uh, with that crash, Graham, Ben Watson losing points and positions here. Anything can happen. I mean, we was, we was running second and then third as a team and then, you know, back down to 10th. So Ben Watson then, lucky to pick himself up from that one. Uh, I think he may have fallen to four, so Coldenoff would have gone through and taken a crucial point for the Netherlands. And Jeffrey Hurlings is going to go one one at the Motor Cross of Nations. And Italy are going to be crowned world champions.
once again for the third time and for the first time since 2002. Yeah, about it. And uh, I was hearing the speaker that something was going on with Alessandro, and I was like, okay, it's the last chance I have to make it up, and uh, we make it up. And so I'm really happy. The team GB. Yeah, I came over the line, and the manager was there, and he said, yeah, I mean, sure third. Could be second because there's some you know ongoing penalties with Italy and right. Team GB on the podium, third overall, Sean Simpson, damaged thumb, heavily strapped up. They finished with 39 points. Sean Simpson, Ben Watson, Conrad Muse. Ben did amazing, I was so happy for him. I was watching the podium, you know, and he was just like smiling all over the place already because he was yeah third on the podium and then they came with the gold plate. And he was like, he didn't realize, he was like, yeah, me, is it me? And then like, yeah, yeah, and he was just the happiest guy ever. And it was nice to see because Ben, yeah, he's a good kid. I, he's my teammate, so we spend uh, some time together and I like uh, to see him, you know, uh, succeeding. I know there were some guys missing and people were saying, you know, it's not the usual nations, but honestly, in, in 10 years when I'm not racing anymore and I look back and I'll go to the 2021 nations and I'll see the names on the list and and you know I'm the MHGP overall winner. I mean, it's there in black and white, and, and no one will take that away from me. So, as a, a thing, when I look back in the in the past, it's going to be yeah, like a great memory. Italy are world champions for the third time.